Hello everyone, it's Jackie, back for another GME update. And look at that, the timer for GME to go boom is going off. Oh boy, it's super exciting, so let's dive into those charts. So today, uh, another one of those super, super duper low volume days, not really uh, too, too much going on. <laughs> Just kidding. We started on a gap down and then we closed green by six and a half percent. Bitches, let's go. So a whole bunch of like kind of important technical things kind of took place today. All right. So one of the first things was, is that we talked about in yesterday's video, we wanted to see if we did start pushing down at the open, we wanted to see that golden pocket hold and we wanted to see it push off of that golden pocket as support. So far, the mission has been successful. Turning the drawings back off, you can see now we did not have a complete bullish engulfing, right? To have a full bullish engulfing candle, we would have need to have seen this body at least or even the wick go a little higher than yesterday and we didn't. But I will say this, the body of today's candle completely encapsulates yesterday. And when traders look at bullish engulfing styled candles, this is kind of what they look at. So that's kind of encouraging. Now, having said that, we saw that right here, right? This was a bullish engulfing candle and then it led nowhere. So it, it, these bullish engulfings are not the end all be all. It's just the fact that they are continuing to happen at support above points of control. You know, after a golden cross has come in. Right, that golden cross, both of your moving averages now, look at those, man. Like those are both now sloping up very nicely. This is a positive development taking place, folks. Like this is this is a really good thing. You know, and if we don't come and test it immediately, so be it. And if we do, cool. Right? But from a technical perspective, the RSI has also managed to hold above the center line. That's incredibly encouraging. And then your MACD, right? Your MACD is slowly starting to decrease, which is also encouraging, right? So as long as that RSI stays above the center, and as long as we stay above this little secondary point of control here at about 2150, things are starting to look really, really good, right? Then we also turn on our DMIs. Well, our ADX is all the way up here at 46. Boy, that's, that's super high, right? That's signaling a lot of strength. And our DMI positive continues to remain up high at 40 as well. Very, 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 very positive. And then today we had the coveted Rick and Morty lips. Ooh, <laughs> right? So we had the Rick and Morty lips take place and then bang, huge move was made off of that. And boy, oh boy, were we all jacked to the tits when we caught the bottom of that one today. So that was fun. Right, so the chart, the chart is looking pretty damn good. Right, the chart is looking pretty damn good. Now, what I haven't done so far is let's open up those Bollinger Bands and let's see where those are sitting. So our four-hour, wow, folks, look at those Bollinger Bands on the four-hour. Oh, goodness gracious. Those things are squeezing tight. They've been squeezing since uh, Tuesday at 11. So uh, Tuesday, 11.30, jeez. I didn't realize how tight they were getting. Holy cow. So that's really encouraging because it's signaling that there's going to be a huge move taking place shortly, the same way that it did down here. And boy, oh boy, folks, this is a really good development. You are also above the center line of the four-hour Bollinger Bands as they squeeze very, very tightly. Boy, that's, that's a big deal. Let's go to the daily. Let's see those daily squeezing. Oh, yeah, that bottom band is coming up real, real fast. Now, we are staying underneath the uh, Bollinger Band midline. That's okay. We're staying strong, right? If we turn off our Bollinger Bands, let's go out onto the weekly and let's see what we see on the weekly. So we did reject that 200 period moving average on the uh, on the weekly. But again, we're printing this like kind of doji styled candle, right? This is arguably a long leg doji. So we only have one more day for this candle to close and we only have one more day for our monthly candle close to, to uh, complete, folks. So here's what I want to see tomorrow. Get us to 25. Get us to have a candle close above the monthly 50. That will be the first time that you've had a monthly candle close above the 50 period moving average since June of 2023. Almost a full calendar year ago. I would love to see a candle close above that monthly 50. Boy, would that be something. Because folks, on the monthly time frame, that's a golden cross. And that's the first test of the golden cross. And then if you start getting above both of those moving averages, boy, oh boy, 
This thing is going to start looking damn good. And it doesn't just look damn good to me. It looks good to all the traders who look and trade GameStop or any of these stocks with high risk, high reward, high volatility. Look at that monthly volume, folks. Look at it. 1.28 billion. And not only that, that is officially confirmed as the fifth highest monthly volume candle in GameStop's history. Wow. In a random May in 2024, boy, that sure is something. You cannot deny it. This thing looks incredible. And the final goal would be to really see that monthly close above 25. It is a lot to ask for. We are a long way from that. But man, if you get above 25, think of the implications. Right? So a lot of folks from Super Stink have been following along with the uh, the $20 strike calls, right? And nobody has a clue what they're talking about, so everybody just talks out of their fucking ass, right? But here's the truth. Somebody has been accumulating a shitload of these 20 strike calls. And looky here, right at the end of the day, once again, 20 seconds before the close, another $2.6 million coming in on those 20 strike calls. So everybody panicked yesterday saying that Buddy sold them. Look it. He's a fucking trader, man. Rather than lose money, he wants to buy at lows. So all of this accumulating that he had done on these large options, he decided, nope, let's just move on from this and let's buy lower. And he did. He successfully bought lower. This where he took that original purchase was at 6.5. When he took this next purchase, it was at 5.17. He's saving himself over $100 per contract. And when you're spending millions, that matters. So people, right? It's not just the 20 strike calls anymore. Now we're seeing them hammer down on the 25s as well. And the 25s are for June. It's almost like somebody's building that gamma ramp again. Now, I want to circle back around to why 25 would be such an important close. Think about the call options that begin to go in the money at 25 bucks. Boy, oh boy. And then also, think about the open interest and where Max Payne lies. So Max Payne this week lies at $20.50. We're two full dollars ahead of that. Every dollar that gets above that is a problem for anyone who's short. More specifically, anyone who is short with $20 puts, they're in trouble. Because they're losing big money here. And every day that it stays above 20, those guys, it's uh, not good. And bulls desperately want 25. They want those calls in the money. So tomorrow will be a battle. And who's going to win, bulls or bears? Do bears drag us to 20 or do bulls get us to 25? Well, the technicals, at least today, you know, the volume wasn't really there, but price was great. So I'm certainly hopeful that we can make a break towards that $25 range. It's possible to get there. It really is. And if we get to 25, man, this chart is crazy because look at all the gaps that are above us. You have one here at 24, another one here at 27 and a half. Another here at 39.75 and another here at 48.60 and another here at 74. Holy. Any sniff of bullish momentum on this thing and oh my goodness gracious. This thing will just go absolutely mental. And then obviously let's not forget that our daily parabolic SAR has triggered as we've consolidated at these lows. And then we can't forget that those four-hour Bollinger Bands are just tight as a motherfucker. Something big is setting up here, man. Something big is setting up. And I'm I'm really hopeful that this is going to lead to a huge move. It looks damn good. And somebody from an options perspective is certainly betting on a large move coming. So tomorrow we're going to fuck around and find out. All right, so what I want to see tomorrow, pretty simple, right? Pretty simple. I want to see GME hold above 2150, and I want to see it start making a push towards 25. And the closer that we get to closing above 25, the closer that monthly candle begins to look better and better and better. 
So let's close out the month strong. Let's have those bulls on parade. And let's take over. Right? Today was a great first step. This is why we talk about everybody just hoosa, calm, cool, relaxed, right? Now, the last thing we're going to touch on, actually, there's two things I want to touch on before we end the video. First of all, if you don't know who Bill Huang is and Archegos is and the relationship that it has to GME, I urge you to listen to the trial and everything that's going on right now. There is a trial with Bill Huang and Archegos who were one of the infinity shorts of GME. And I am telling you guys, this trial is getting no attention. I take a little piece of responsibility because I've really not talked about it very much, but I should have been. But this is really important, folks. And we need people to start digging into this trial and digging into the information. So far, we found out that Bill had a $58 billion short portfolio. Boy, going to be tough to cover some of those losses, you'd imagine, with some of those bullet swaps, hey? All right, so that's number one. And then number two, GME announced their earnings after hours here today. Nailed it. Called it. Thank you. Swish. And so GameStop's earnings are going to be on the 11th. So this said the 5th. Eh, nope, going to be on the 11th. Sorry, signing Jim. So why the 11th? That's a really strange precedent. You want to know why I say it's a strange precedent? GME's never really had it on that date before. Truly. Never really had it on that date before. We've had it early in June, almost religiously. Right? But the 11th is certainly one of the more interesting and unique dates that we've seen on a GME uh, June uh, reporting. Every single one has been that we just showed you here on the chart. Every single June has been either the 4th, the 7th, or the 9th. Or any of the dates in between those numbers. Not a single one has ever come on like close, closing in on the uh, late second week of June. Very, 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 very interesting stuff, folks. What it relates to? Eh. That's for tinfoil guys and whatever else to speculate about. But I can tell you from my perspective, all of the weird shit that's been going on with GME in the last few weeks, including the cat tweets, including the silly articles from silly short sellers, including Citron Research, including the really strange options uh, amount of premium that we've been seeing, including the insane number of dark pool trades that we've been seeing. It is worth discussing that there could be something cooking. Now, everybody better hold on to their expectations because GameStop might not announce it directly on their earnings. May take a little while after earnings. But it does certainly feel to me like there is something in the air. It smells like pizza. Why is that pizza? There's something in the air. And you got to be excited about this chart, man. This chart looks special. This chart looks special. This very, it's very reminiscent, folks. It's very reminiscent of, of the sneeze. Very reminiscent. That first absolute explosive move up. The deep retracement down post Golden Cross as both of them move up. Then it finds support in the middle of that drop and then off to the races. Dude, this... This thing right here, this looks so good. Like this really does look so good. And beyond the fact that it looks so good, it feels to me like there's somebody on the other end of this fucking thing that's not doing too good right now. My man is pulling hair out. He's sweating in a back room. He can't get the sauna to work because he's out of cash. Like it's desperate times for somebody behind the scenes. That's what this feels like to me. So strap in, folks, because the games have only just begun. But we should be excited. And if we start pushing up tomorrow, look for a break of 24 and 25. You break those two levels, dude, and you get to start talking about the gap fill up here at 27.85. And that's a huge fucking move from where we were just at the bottom yesterday. So strap in, right? 
And then the last little indicator thing I'm going to share with you guys is the average true range, okay? The average true range shows you the amount that a stock moves every single day if you have this on the daily time frame. So we're on the daily, and this shows us how much GameStop moves every day. Right now, GameStop is supposed to move $5.22 every day. You guys will notice that the average true range of GME, when we exploded, that was some of the highest highs that we have ever seen the average true range. And the fact that it continues to remain elevated while barely dropping is really encouraging because it continues to tell us that there is a load of volatility here. And then we add in the fact that the four-hour Bollinger Bands are just tight as shit and squeezing tight. Man, this thing is looking like it. This thing looks good. It looks really good. Only thing we have to caution against today was simply the low volume. That's it. That's the only thing we have to caution against is just the low volume. Other than the low volume, today was a fantastic day. Okay? Now, I'm just drawing this because I, I just I just happened to notice this, and I just want to draw it in just to see. Now, it's not going to be very clean. Let's just see here. I just want to quickly draw this in just to see what it looks like because it probably isn't going to be the cleanest thing that we ever seen, but let's just, let's just draw it in anyways. Okay. So there might be a diamond structure there. Now for bullish structures, let's see, diamond, 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 diamond. Diamond bottoms are the number six bullish continuation pattern. So this is a bullish uptrend, right? And if we're looking for continuation of the bullish uptrend, a diamond bottom is the number six best bullish continuation structure. So if this does in fact turn into be a diamond bottom, folks, there's good probabilities here. And don't forget, we got the Jackie Indicator target at 3350, man. Things are looking good. We're looking sharp. Let's ah, let's keep that momentum. Let's give him the old pip pip. Give him the old pip pip. But folks, that is it. That is all. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. As always, don't forget to hit the subscribe and always hit the like button. And then after you hit the like button, make sure you tell Jackie what an asshole he is for making you press the like button. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.